Hello, my name is Bonnie Harrison, and I am here with uh, my friend, my business partner, Mr. Tom Leota. And I'm actually a single mom with four kids. And when Tom and I actually started working together, I discovered that he had some very valuable knowledge when it came to actually working with the kids. And I just saw such a huge difference in my family's life in the first, say, five minutes he was actually speaking with them Uh, and then I saw it more as we progressed through the weeks um, just watching him interact with the kids and giving them what seemed to me uh, was a desire to actually do more a desire to cooperate more and they absolutely seemed extremely happy uh, in the process and so I've got Tom here who's going to talk about right now, uh, what is Creating Champions for Life, Tom? Well, Creating Champions for Life, Bonnie, is a program that allows parents and kids to work together along with their schooling system and an extracurricular activity that allows them to actually be themselves and learn to develop in an environment that is always a win-win-win for everybody involved. And as you know and I know, every every parent's job from age, say, five all the way up to 18 when they're in a school system is to give them the tools so they can actually become fishermen versus just allowing them to be dependent and feed them fish. And that's really what the Creating Champions for Life curriculum is all about. Yeah, that I know as a parent, we all want to teach our uh, kids how to fish and we want them to have the best lives and we want them to make good decisions and all of that and we want them to behave, <laughs> so to speak. And before we get too much into the Creating Champions for Life, Tom, can you just share uh, the beginning for you? Where did you begin actually working with children and why are you so passionate about what it is you've put together with this program. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, just real quick, Bonnie, people, I just had a birthday, and people asked, oh, my gosh, how old are you? And obviously, you know that I'll put the word old into young, so I'm actually physically, I'd ask them, mentally, physically, or spiritually. And mentally, I'm five. Physically, I'm 41. Spiritually, I'm about 14 billion. And so when I say that, is I'm a kid at heart who's just a big kid. And so I really relate with kids. Kids are great fun to be around. And so when I was actually in high school, I taught Little League Baseball for a group of kids that were between ages 8 to 10. And I was 17 years at the time. And the kids absolutely just adored hanging out with me because I could relate to them. I could have fun with them. I could... Let them be kids versus being a parent who's reliving their life through a child. And especially when it came to Little League, there are so many dads who never made the team or didn't score a home run and chose to live those glory days through their kids. And so that's where it began. And then as I progressed out of there, I spent uh, a good 10 years coaching kids on how to play video games for a company called Nintendo. And I had a call count of over 110,000 little kids or sometimes big kids that play video games on coaching them through turning obstacles into opportunities. And during my process of how I've actually evolved working with kids, I started martial arts uh, 20 plus years ago and then began teaching martial arts to kids in 1994. And then in 1997, I actually opened up my own school and started teaching after-school martial art programs. And then it was in 2000, about 1999-2000, when I actually integrated an after-school martial art program. And what it was is a constructive alternative to just daycare because I saw so many single moms that had three kids that most of them just went to daycare because Mom wasn't off work until 6. And so this child never got a chance to actually be in an extracurricular activity like a sport that allowed them to challenge themselves and learn to hone some skills and sportsmanship. 
So the after-school martial art program actually picked him up from school, actually did a snack time, a homework time, and taught a martial art class instead of just being in a quote-unquote traditional daycare. And so that character development really was the part that made it all work. And so with having an education in child psychology, early childhood development, school head, school age development, all those things played a key role. And I created a program that helped kids and parents in school all work together. And in 2004, it was actually nominated and inducted in the Martial Art Hall of Fame for most creative after-school martial art program, which was just a byproduct of following my passion and how much I love to work with kids because kids are the ones that are open and are the ones that can learn the most to develop good habits for their lives. Well, that's amazing. Um, how many kids actually went through the after-school program that you did at your martial arts school? Wow, when you start to add up all the years that went through, there was literally well over thousands of kids that have went through the program. There would be summer camp programs each summer. There would be uh, kids in the hundreds that would attend every single week to the program. Wow, so this program that you've created uh, has been tried and tested. Oh, yeah, it's got well over 10-plus years of field testing, what actually does work, what doesn't work, with a lot of education in the childhood psychology and early development teachings and backgrounds to create a safe working environment for kids to be able to make choices because young kids don't have the capacity to make decisions. That's where parents and people like this in our program work together to guide children versus have them always be in an environment of punishment. Guiding behavior versus punishment is one of the key cornerstones to creating a champion for life. Yeah, that right there is some very valuable information. Um, you know, just here I am. I've got four kids, ages 7 to 13, and so there's a lot of things to deal with. And sometimes it's just like pulling your hair out going, how do I get them to you know, get up and go to school in the morning or how do I get them to clean their room or even pick up after themselves? And it can be really frustrating. And I know that you witnessed me, um, you know, do this or, or you're not going to get this or I'm going to do this if you don't do this. And it, it, it comes from a great intention. But if you, you don't know, that's the only thing that I was ever taught through my lifetime was, you know, punishment uh, if you didn't do the right thing. So, Tell me, in your heart, you've created this program. You put a lot of time into it. It was inducted into the Martial Arts Hall of Fame. You're extremely good at it. And so I'm just going to tug at your heartstrings right now just a little bit. And why would you actually take the time to put it into a program uh, so that parents out there can actually have access to it? Where is, you know, what's driving you to actually do this? Well, I appreciate you asking that, Bonnie. One of the key things is I'm always very solution-oriented on finding ways to make things work correctly with integrity. One of the things that I observed, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but when you run a martial art program, and I have many other friends that ran martial art programs, you have an overhead. And you had to actually make money in order to pay the rent. And so... What I observed was martial arts getting watered down again and again and again where kids were going through a belt ranking system and it was really just kind of a buy a belt program. The kids were going from white to yellow to orange to purple, green, blue, all the way up and they could be in a program for one or two years but there's still not a character development change like self-control or being responsible. They're, they're still goofing off at school or they're still not listening to their parents at home. And see, that's what really triggered I'm thinking, okay, they do perfect for me. I could have every child vacuum the dojang. I could have them do their homework for me. But as soon as they got out of my influence, they went back into the goof-offville. And so I was like, how do we, what's the best way to tie all these together? Home, school, and an extracurricular activity. In this case was martial arts. And so as I tied those three together, I looked at the 
elements in nature, and I picked fire as one of them. As everybody knows, you need heat, spark, and air to make a campfire burn. And when you have them all in the right balance, oh my gosh, a campfire is a beautiful thing to roast marshmallows, enjoy the nice warm glow. But you know and I know, Bonnie, that if that bonfire was too much wood or too much heat, it's not very pleasurable. Or if it wasn't getting enough oxygen, it was smoking out the whole campsite. And see, Hmm. every single child has that little fire inside. And when they have all three elements that are all being gifted to them in the right proportion, boy, that child's passion just glows just like that beautiful campfire. And so home, school, and the martial arts was that trifecta, and that's really understanding giving the environment for the child to grow and make choices through guiding behavior versus the traditional way of I don't know and punishing them, of telling them, no, don't do that, when really a child is just looking for structure. It's not an accident, Bonnie, that McDonald's corporations has a play field or playground at their restaurant. Kids love structure. And one of the biggest things is when they have structure, they just engage and they become alive. One of the key things that's very important to understand is there's a psychology in a very good book that was written on how single parents actually make the incorrect decisions on raising their children. When they are separated and they're single, they actually have a deep core inside of feeling guilty that they didn't give their children the ideal two-parent family. So instead of following and moving forward, they compensate by asking, well, what does make little Timmy happy? What does Timmy like to have for dinner? And they follow decisions to make them happy. And that's where the process begins and gets off the mark. So this program puts things back into perspective and gives that single family parent or two parent family works same, same, a external program that helps the child actually hear what the parents are teaching them. Because you know and I know that when we were little kids, our parents were stupid. They didn't know anything. (laughs) Our uncles were smarter than our dads. Our aunts were brighter than our moms. And they were saying the exact same thing. And that's really one of the unique benefits of parents engaging in this is that we have the children learn all those basic skills that good parents always would like them to learn. We are the uncles and aunts in that particular formula. And that's really why I have always had a passion to do this and I always will have a passion to do this because one, it's the right thing. And two, when you watch kids grow in this beautiful environment, Oh, everybody loves a beautiful campfire. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Everybody loves order in their home and peace between siblings and cooperative behavior. Uh, you were talking about school, household, extracurricular activities. And, I mean, any parent listening to this audio right now can picture being in a grocery store and, you know, sometimes when we're in our own little mess, we don't even witness or see or become aware of what's going on. But when you're watching other people interact with their children in some place like a grocery store, it's very obvious (laughs) to see a lot of, you know, I want this and mom saying no and mom has no idea what to do or how to handle it in this circumstance because everybody's around watching and, it can actually cause a lot of anxiety, anger. Uh, you see power struggles going on. And so just to uh, close up this, this point, you can see the picture that I'm talking about, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I can see that all the time in the grocery store. That's <laughs> a, a great area to go. You see what I'm talking yeah. about? That can easily be fixed with the right program the right training, but most important, somebody who's willing to make a firm commitment because it does require some effort. It's not a buy a program and everything magically happens. It is a process. 
Oh, gosh. And so I'm just going to ask anybody listening, I mean, if there was a way that you could create peace in your household, order, good behavior, uh, children that make good uh, choices for their life, children that are self-disciplined. Tom, I believe you had mentioned, um, you know, self-discipline is asking the child to do something how many times? (laughs) <laughs> oh, yeah, self, self-discipline. self I mean, that's actually the third module in this particular program. But when your child actually does have the self-discipline module completed and we move forward in that character development, you'll ask your child to do one thing one time and it's done. That's what self-discipline is all about. So how awesome is it that every parent would love to say, look, I'd like to have the dishes done, I'd like your homework done, and your room cleaned up by the time I get home and you've only had to ask once. Those are real benefits and characteristics of the children that are in this program with a parent who's engaging in the process. Because parents at first will ask me, fix my kids. And I would kind of chuckle when he used to bring them into the martial art program. I'm like, good, Mrs. Jones, let's sit down because it's you and I that must fix first. The child will follow. And that's really how the process works. You're not going to give me your kids to fix because I can fix them, but it's like taking a shower and then putting your dirty clothes back on. If I put them back into an environment at home that is not supportive of this, then I'll tell you right now, save your money, save your time, do not buy this program. But when you are willing to make a firm commitment for a minimum three months, 90 days, or better yet, one quarter of college, then yes you're making the right decision, and if and only when you decide that, then yes, I'd be very happy to work with you because there is no magical one week or one magic thing you're going to say, but in 90 days, you will see things like self-control where I am in control of my body, my actions. The benefits you'll see in this is that your car rides are quiet. The kids are not (laughs) fighting in the house. They're actually sitting down watching a movie together, and you're almost thinking, oh, my gosh, they all must be sleepy. (laughs) You'll also, the next phase, as you all understand, is they'll have the responsibility where they are, I am responsible for my actions and my belongings. So, therefore, uh, somebody else made me do it. No, I am in control of what happens. And then, two, when they actually have things of toys or even like glasses, that you paid a lot of money for, they take really good care of those because they know it's their responsibility versus, uh, Mom, my glasses got broke and it happened at recess and it wasn't my fault. Those things are disappearing as characteristic traits when they go through this program. And then the third one is self-discipline, where children are asked to do one-time things and it gets done. Now, I know, Bonnie, you've experienced just a taste of this program, and you're getting more and more as it goes on. But if anybody was to say that this is real, because I know it is. I've been doing it for a very long time, so you can't convince me that it's not. I already am. But for you, you've seen this firsthand, and you're actually truly amazed of like, oh, my gosh, what did you do? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I knew that you had uh, two degrees in early childhood development, child psychology. I knew that you had run the program through your martial arts school, uh, but I didn't really understand the capacity of what you actually created until you began implementing just some little, very subtle techniques with my with my kids. And so we'll take the two youngest ones as an example. Uh, you know, I do tend to overcompensate with my kids. I'm a single mom. I run a full-time business. And, yes, I am looking for ways to make sure that my kids know that I love them and I'm looking for ways to, you know, make sure that they're happy and things like this. And I remember Zach asking you to play a game on your phone, and you just asked him a really simple question. It was, I'd love for you to play a game on my phone. Uh, you know, what could we do that would, uh, you know, entitle you to use my phone for 20 minutes? And before we even got in the driveway, I had my 7-year-old and 9-year-old having, they had cloths out, they had papers all organized in the back seat. Nobody had asked them to do any of this. And in fact, 
they stayed in the vehicle for at least 10 minutes after we got home cleaning it and organizing it, happy as punch. And I'm looking at them going, you know, my mouth's hanging open going, what did you do? And then I just saw a huge opportunity for every household in the world to actually have this information, to have the tools so that we can empower and uplift our children instead of, uh, you know, conditioning them in a way and hurting them in a way that it would actually take years and years to, you know, replenish their self-confidence. So um, I see this as a proactive way to build your children's self-confidence, create peace within the household, and just literally everything in your world will change implementing the, the strategies. I've witnessed it, lived it, seen it, and I am extremely grateful that, Tom, you have agreed to actually put this into a, a program. Yeah, it's absolutely my pleasure. This can work for any groups of kids, anywhere, period. And uh, the key thing that you observed there, Bonnie, was guiding behavior versus punishment. Now, yeah. as as I observed, many parents, when let's pick that example, when you're in a grocery store and little Timmy comes up with, Mama wants the cereal, and they're like, put that back. And, and they're like, whining, Mama, I want it. You know, it's so there's a power struggle. And then... Whoever wins, that's kind of punishment. If you don't listen to me, I'm taking away your Game Boy. Or I mean, it's it, it's so classic to watch the punishment roles go again and again. Because if any anybody's out there like me, I had my own paddle when I was in grade school. I was always sent to the principal's office. They punished me all the time because I was a free little spirit. I could just do whatever I wanted to do. And that wasn't following direction. So they punished me rather than guiding me. You know, I believe that kids that have ADD, as they call it, instead of giving them Ritalin, I think parents or teachers ought to give them more activities to do because they're very smart. They can come up with the answer right away. They don't take half an hour like the rest of the classroom. So, of course, they're bored. Give them more stuff to do. Smarter teachers can embrace those hyperactive children, and that's really what this program is about is putting that environment so they can actually excel. And they always do when it's done correctly. And so that guiding behavior, now this is a really a key thing, and I'll give you one little tidbit on how successful you can be with just this one thing, even if you don't even get involved with the program. But every good parent always feels that your child should have at least one vegetable when they make dinner. You would agree, yes, Bonnie? Yes. Absolutely. So here's the, here's the classic thing. Uh, let's just make them uh, broccoli. Let's make them peas or, or green beans or something. And all of a sudden, they ate the macaroni and cheese. They love the other stuff, but they're like, eat your vegetables. And they're like, mm, I don't want to. Come on, eat it. And then see, there's the power struggle. If you don't eat that, you're not getting dessert. If you don't get that, you're not watching TV. So there's that whole punishment thing. But when you shift it around and go, little Timmy, which one of these is your favorite? Do you like peas, corn, or carrots with dinner tonight? And see, the child can't make decisions on their, on their own. They don't have that capacity until they're 13, at least, to think abstract. So they can't go, well, Mom, I'm, I'm really growing right now, and I need good nutrition, so make sure I have a vegetable because that's a decision. See, they can't do that yet. However, a parent knows they must eat those. So what they do is they get to make choices. So you ask them, what's their favorite, peas, corn, or carrots? And they're going to go, hmm, well, um, corn. And you, mom would be like, perfect. And you make corn. So <laughs> now the child actually goes, ah, see, I tell mom, I mean, this is my decision. And anytime anybody does anything, it's always your decision. Name a time that anybody likes to be told what to do. Nobody does. Neither right. do children. So with that being said, they made a choice. Ooh, I get to have corn with my dinner, and they get excited. The parents sitting back going, I always win. Even if they pick peas, I win. They pick corn, carrots, broccoli. The parent always wins versus being a dictator. And that's really where that guiding behavior really plays a key role. So how awesome, and this is one of the best benefits, Rather than operating in a yes, 
no environment with your kids, you always operate in a yes, yes, or a good and or better working relationship. So everything that your children looks to earn and do and grow and be and grow is all done in a yes environment versus a yes, no environment. And that really makes for a happy household. And that's really one of the benefits that just comes standard when parents engage with the process. And once they're in it, they'll be able to use these things for the rest of their lives because it always comes down to a parent's job from age 5 to 18 is to give them the tools to become a great fisherman so they can have enough fish to eat the rest of their life versus just giving them a fish and now they're 18 and they're so codependent because the single parent overcompensated because they love them and now they can't do anything on their own and that's why it's so important to have this so you can create a champion for life. Right, and I've seen an awful lot of uh, actually two-parent households make very similar mistakes with their children that a single parent would make as well. You find that also? Oh, it's absolutely across the board. Two parents, one parent, same sex, different sex. It's the same across the board. The only reason I'm kind of pointing out the one that was for single parents is because they are the ones that usually there isn't somebody at home. So this program works really well as a, another cornerstone of completing that equation for the kids. But whether it's two parents or one parent, this works exactly the same because both parents will make the exact same wrong decisions when it comes to guiding behavior versus yes. punishment. And this is the solution. Okay, that's awesome. Uh, I know that I am really excited to uh, get this information, get the strategies, techniques in uh, people's hands out there. Um, now, when we talk about a year program, this is a year, uh, you know, one year program that would be a very tense, intensive coaching program that you'll be doing online. Is that right? Absolutely, absolutely. The The process, when you really think about it, is think about it, I'm going to go to college for a year, and then you'll have a lifetime worth of residual benefits. But the minimum that you must make a decision on is at least one quarter of college, three months, 90 days, 12 weeks. That's when you'll actually make a decision, and you'll see great benefits, because once you spend 90 days in this program, and your child is actually having self-control, responsible, and beginning to become self-disciplined, oh, you'll love to keep the momentum going because that's really what it's all about. Yeah, it's like if you've been paddling upstream your entire life and you simply let go of the oars and the boat actually turns around and you just kind of go with the flow, that's the picture that just came in my mind, Tom. Is that a good analogy for what we're actually creating out there for the parents? Absolutely. If you find yourself in any kind of power struggle, you're right. You can outpower your child for a little while, like rowing upstream, but the environment is going to always win. The river will always win. The water will erode away the rock in just a matter of time. So when you can work in conjunction, see the Children's intelligence is so very, very high. Every parent can relate that they can come up with a hundred reasons why their room wasn't clean or the mess on the kitchen table wasn't their fault. They're very resourceful. I mean, yeah, and that's the whole thing. So <laughs> what's the opposite of that? See, that's what the program does is it takes that energy and that focus from things not being done and coming up with excuses versus things that are done, and ways to make things work and more solution-oriented. It's one time when the children come up and say, could you open this for me? And you set them down and you say, well, let me just repeat after me. I am a genius. I can figure out things easily and elegantly, even when I've never done them before yet. And all of a sudden, they begin to have that mindset and they look at that particular activity of opening up the jar or the concentrated juice container. 
And all of a sudden, things just click for them. They go, oh, and then they begin to open it all on their own, and that's the spark of creativity versus, okay, this is what you do here. I showed, I showed you a hundred times. What's wrong with you? Why can't you learn? It's, it, it, right. it just, it's all it is is a communication approach. It's very simple. And then when it is, the child has that locked in. Now they've got it locked in. They had a great experience. And would you ever have to show them again, or would they ever ask you how to open that again? Never. No. That building block is done, secured, and locked in for the rest of their life. And it was done with a positive reinforcement. So what did that do with their confidence to be able to move on to the next task that they're going to learn in their life with you or through somebody else? It begins that plus one program. And that's yeah. really the momentum that just makes things continue to build. So we could spend literally days on all the list of all the benefits, Bonnie, but the important part is someone is to make a commitment that they're going to do something now for themselves, their family, and for their kids, and that's really what is this investment all about because it will give you a lifetime of residual benefits guaranteed. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, um, you know, I'm a single mom. I've got four kids. I'm open to taking your program. We're talking about either, you know, you, you called it a quarter of college, which is a 90-day or three-month period as a minimum commitment. But let's say that I want to commit for the entire year, but what's running through my mind is, you know, what if I can't commit? What if I miss a coaching call? You know, I'm really busy. Um, I'm kind of got this fear coming up inside of me. Um, I, I want to do it, but I have the fear coming up inside of me that's telling me I might not be able to commit to it. So can you just share the simplicity of a program or imp implementing it, how simple it would be? Well, it's as simple as I want to go shopping. And guess what? You'll find a way to get to the mall, find the clothes that are important for you, and buy them. <laughs> See, it, it's all about the decision. See, if you're having fear like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to follow through this, then don't. Just hang up the phone. Just go away. Leave this for something later. Because you have to make a decision that I am choosing to do something that's right for my family, for my kids, and that's really, you'll make this work. You'll be able to find time to go, oh, I can make that schedule. Let me rearrange so I can be on that call. Let me listen to the audio, and let me actually go through the workbook, and then, oh, my gosh, I did happen to miss one call, but it's recorded. I can listen to it later. See, if you can make a decision that you're putting this investment in your children, then by all means, move forward, because if not this, then what? And if not now, when? And if it's not you, then who? That's the three questions you must answer when it comes to your children's development. You've got anywhere from age 5 to 18. So answer those three questions, and if it's now, do it. If it's you, do it. If this program sounds like this could be the answer because nothing else worked it for you, then do it. That's the bottom line, and it is very simple. It's just a matter of joining in, doing something, and because you engage doing something, let the process and the system do all the work with you, and you'll be able to receive all the benefits now and be retained for the rest of your life. Okay, that's excellent. And so what does the, uh, what does the process entail? Okay, so I make the commitment right now. Yes, I'm willing to commit to, uh, to my children and to myself. Now what? Well, excellent. What we do is you have, you have an audio that you'll listen to to understand the material. You'll have a once-a-week group coaching that you'll be able to interact and understand some of the techniques and answer questions and what other questions that other people have. Plus, you have a download workbook with the material to actually go through and things that you'll actually post up and hang on the refrigerator and in the kids' room and things like that, you'll have those materials that you'll work with. And so if you're able to actually do things like that and you're open to change of doing something a little bit different than what you're doing, it could be something as simple as devoting and making a conscious effort of about 10 minutes minimum per day 
in this direction, mm. and that's really how simple it can be. And then however much time you add, it will all be, you have to communicate with your kids, yes? You talk with them. Yes. Right. You yeah. got to feed them. You got to give them toys. You got to, like, right. teach, teach them things to learn. It's all about learning a better way to deliver it, what you're already doing. So, really, the program is asking you to do what you're doing, what you're going to do anyways, but you do it in a way that's more guiding behavior versus punishment. Because, as you know and I know, nobody loves to be told what to do but we like to be in a loving environment so we can make choices, and that's where the win-win always comes out as a victor. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Tom, for taking the time to put this audio together. I I believe that, uh, you know, you're making history with this program, and if you think being inducted into the Martial Arts Hall of Fame was excited, um, I'm thinking Nobel Prize. I'm thinking that this is going to just change families all over the world, and I really appreciate you 